Hey everybody and welcome back to TechBench. Now that the summer holidays are over, it's time to get back on track and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to overclock and undervolt my 9950X 3D. Now there's three flavors to when it comes to anything overclocking, undervolting. You can go down the first path, which is simply to undervolt. So in that scenario, what you're most concerned about is the power draw and the thermals off the back of that. So less interested in the frequency, more interested in bringing that power draw down. The second is the inverse of that, and it's your traditional overclock, whereby you're willing to give up some efficiency and temperature in the pursuit of getting higher frequencies and more performance. The third one I think is the sweet spot and that's what I'm focusing on in this video. It's to do both an undervolt and an overclock and try and keep it to stock because we know as I discussed in the previous video with my GPU that there's often a lot of headroom that's baked into these devices off the shelf. So as you can see on screen, I've been able to drop the power very slightly but I have been able to increase the performance of the CPU significantly without having any massive increase in power which you would usually associate with an overclock. I'll show you how to do that in the BIOS now. Now for this video, I am using the Expo profile on my RAM, which puts it at DDR5 with a CL of 26, which also gets me some extra free performance. I might do some more fine tuning in the future when I look at the RAM just to see if there's anything more to eke out of it, but it's already pretty quick RAM and I'm probably gonna get into the territory of diminishing returns. And I also wanna get the CPU stable first before I start tweaking with the RAM. So here I've just gone into the advanced settings on my motherboard and the way that we're going to be doing the overclock is to actually go into the AMD overclocking section which should be on your motherboard. Now the key thing again I stress here is the process not necessarily the values you will have to work those out for yourself. But here's the warning about the overclocking so have a read. Traditionally with undervolting you don't really have a problem because you're actually going to be putting less voltage through the CPU. Next we want to go to Precision Boost Overdrive and we want to make sure that that is set to Advanced which will open up the other options you can see here on screen. Now for the PBO limits I've put that to Disabled because I basically want to have all of my power available to it so it can reach higher frequencies but do make sure that you've got a decent enough cooler for this. I've set the Overdrive to be positive because what we're going to be doing there is the boost clock we want to override to be positive so what we're actually doing here is we're moving the frequency curve a bit like we did in the last video with the gpu so what we're trying to do is higher frequency at a lower voltage we'll come onto that voltage in a second but here i've enabled positive and from everything i've read and researched i think pretty much every cpu like this will be able to boost an additional 200 megahertz the actual overclock isn't a problem the bit where the silicon lottery comes into play is in a moment where we'll look at the actual voltage curve which is down at the bottom you can see that curve optimizer 200 is the most I can do on my motherboard I can't actually change that but if 200 for whatever reason wasn't stable you can reduce that the next up is the power thermal throttle so here I put that to manual and I've specified that the maximum I want my CPU to go up to is 85c I'm happy with 85c that's well within spec and I've got a cooler that should be able to keep up with that but again tailor that to whatever system you've got whatever cooling you've got in your machine Lastly, we want to go down to the curve optimizer and I've set this to all cores and I've set this to negative. Now what this is doing is this is basically moving that voltage curve down so we're offsetting the curve for voltage by 25. Now that is the bit really where the silicon lottery comes in and there isn't a magic number for that. I'm fairly certain that all CPUs should be able to handle about 20. Mine seems to be able to handle 25. I did try 30 but I was getting some stability issues. So this is the bit where you'll need to have a play and run some benchmarks and find something that works for you. Now if we do go back we can have a look at the fabric frequency as well. So within there we've got the DDR timings but also the FCLK settings and I've set mine to 2100. Now again this is going to be dependent on your CPU, you'll need to have a play with this. I've also set the UCLK to match the memory clock and you can change that to if you're running say 8000 memory you can actually run that by halving it over 2 which is what you'd need to do. Now once you're comfortable with where you've got to on your overclock, so you've got your machine booting up, maybe you've done some rudimentary testing, 
It's a good idea then to go and do some more stringent testing. So running something like a Cinebench would be sort of a good halfway house, maybe playing some games. But I also recommend something like a Prime 95 test over an extended period of time. And definitely if you're going to be doing anything with your RAM, you want to test that. So even turning on the Expo, don't take that for granted. You do want to go and test that long term. Anyway, I'm going to run a Cinebench now. We'll see where it gets to. I'll see you in a minute. Now after running those tests, I've landed with a score of 2,333, which is by no means a record breaker. There are people out there, I think, getting 2,400, 2,500, even 2,600. But those people are hardcore overclockers who are obviously putting a lot more voltage and heat through this chip. My goal in this was to undervolt, which we've done, and to also have a stock overclock, i.e. bump the frequency up to um, closer to its boost frequency at all times. And I'm happy with that result. Now, what did that do in terms of the temperatures, etc.? Well, we can see here, or you might not because it's quite small. Here, my CPU never exceeded, I think the max was 78 degrees. So pretty happy with that. And the maximum power draw was 200 watts on there. So I think we've been successful here in getting a slight undervolt and also being able to keep stable a slight overclock. Now there's probably some more tweaking here to do, so I'm going to go back into the BIOS and have a play. But broadly speaking, it's going to be tweaks of that same process. I might look at some more specific CPU overclocking settings. And for a bit of fun in a totally separate video that isn't related to undervolting, I might do say a hardcore overclock whereby we will start upping the frequencies, upping the temperatures and hopefully get onto a higher Cinebench number. But my goal is to have this undervolted because this system as well with a 5090, it runs pretty hot, it's very thirsty, and to be honest, you're in the territory of minimal games, especially with some of the applications that I run, some of the games, I don't need that extra 2% performance for something like 200 watts of extra power usage. Now as a quick edit, I did actually run those tests again and I closed down everything in my system tray. So OBS, I also had DaVinci Resolve up and running, Discord, a few of those sorts of things, which are obviously gonna be chewing up some cycles. And I suspect when everyone else does the benchmarks, they turn all of that stuff off. Probably not indicative of real world performance because you will have those apps running, but I did end up with 2,466. So what's that, 133 improvement just by turning those off. So I'm now seeing definitely an uplift from stock all whilst running this undervolted and running cooler. So. I'm going to chalk this up to a success, but as I said earlier, I will be looking to do, for entertainment purposes, a heavier overclock in the near future. So thanks for watching everybody. As I said, this was just a quick and easy way to do an undervolt and an overclock. It's by no means comprehensive. There are people out there who are far more astute in this stuff. Go and check those out. People like Buildzoid, for example. So let me know what you think of this approach. Let me know what results you got from it. And just more in general, really interested to hear about your overclocking journey. Definitely interested to hear as well about what your cooling solutions are, how hot you're running these things, how comfortable you are with running them at those temperatures for extended periods of time. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.